You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Monday, March 25th. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia has filed a motion to unseat House Speaker Mike Johnson, citing disagreement with his support for a bipartisan $1.2 trillion funding bill aimed at preventing a government shutdown. Green criticizes the bill for allegedly failing to tackle the illegal immigration crisis and accuses Johnson of forsaking Republican values by supporting legislation that, in her view, panders to Democratic priorities and compromises on key issues such as border security. The bill, which successfully passed the House with a 286 to 134 vote, has been contentious, with Green asserting, quote, We need a Speaker of the House who will fight to secure America's border at all costs, not one that passes a trillion-dollar Democrat wish list. While Johnson's spokesperson states he is focused on governing and advancing conservative legislation, Green's move signals a significant challenge to his leadership, emphasizing a deep rift on policy priorities within the party. Candace Owens, a prominent conservative commentator, has recently ended her partnership with The Daily Wire, sparking discussions and rumors about her future plans. Owens made an appeal for donations on her website, teasing, quote, many announcements in the weeks to come. This move follows a public disagreement with Daily Wire's Ben Shapiro over Owens' comments regarding Israel's response to the Hamas attack, which Shapiro labeled as absolutely disgraceful. Owens defended her stance by citing her right to free speech, even quoting scripture in her defense. The controversy has been compounded by the Anti-Defamation League's accusation of anti-Semitism against Owens and her controversial claim regarding the French president's wife. Meanwhile, Rabbi Michael Barclay and Candace Owens engaged in a profound discussion covering anti-Semitism's historical and contemporary facets, sparked by Barclay's previous accusation against Owens of being an anti-Semitic Jew hater related to her comments on the Hamas invasion of Israel, Barclay providing a nuanced definition of anti-Semitism stressed it as viewing Jews as a threat due to their non-acceptance of Jesus as the Messiah, leading to the perpetuation of harmful myths like the blood libel. Furthermore, he discussed the varying perceptions of Mel Gibson's film, The Passion of the Christ, highlighting how it could be seen as anti-Semitic by those not emotionally invested in Jesus' suffering. The conversation also ventured into the realm of Jews' historical involvement in the entertainment industry, with Owens questioning the portrayal of Jewish control over Hollywood, a topic Barclay dismissed as perpetuating an old anti-Semitic trope. You can read more about their discussion by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. Manhattan's largest school board, Community Education Council District 2, has passed Resolution 248 with an 8-3 to vote aiming to revisit New York City Public Schools' guidelines on gender identity in athletics. The resolution, championed by board members Maud Marin, Allison Bowen, Sabina Serenisi, and Len Silverman, seeks immediate review of the 2019 guidelines that allowed gender identity to supersede biological sex in school sports citing concerns over the negative impacts on girls' sports equity. Critics, including prominent LGBTQ officials like Councilmember Eric Botcher and State Senator Brad holman Segal, denounced the resolution as discriminatory, arguing it targets transgender girls and undermines inclusivity. Supporters, however, argue it's crucial to reevaluate the guidelines to ensure fair and inclusive athletics participation. This decision has sparked a significant backlash, with both sides voicing their commitment to the rights and dignity of all student-athletes. This episode is brought to you by Patriot Mobile. Americans have had enough of supporting companies that don't share our values. Tired of compromise? Switch to Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They offer dependable, nationwide wireless coverage, giving you the same coverage you're used to while defending biblical values. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash Christian Post or call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation with the offer code Christian Post. You can also click that link at the top of the show notes in today's episode. PatriotMobile.com slash Christian Post or call 972 Patriot. Christian sports anchor and former Sports Center host Sage Steele delivered a compelling speech at Liberty University on March 20th, sharing her personal struggles and beliefs amidst career challenges. In May 2022, just weeks after filing a lawsuit against ESPN for alleged retaliation and silencing her views, 
Steele experienced a physical and metaphorical blow. A golf ball struck her in the mouth, leading to significant injuries. In her speech, Steele recounted being sidelined by ESPN after criticizing the company's COVID-19 vaccine mandate and expressing views on her biracial identity on Jay Cutler's podcast. Despite these setbacks and doubting her choices after the accident, Steele perceived the incident not as sign from God to remain silent, but as a devil's attempt to intimidate her. She emphasized resilience, speaking truthfully, protected by faith despite facing isolation at ESPN. Steele said, settled her lawsuit in August 2023, leaving ESPN behind and highlighting the newfound freedom and blessings she's experienced thereafter. Jeff Lorg has been unanimously elected as the new president of the Southern Baptist Convention Executive Committee in a significant move heralded by SBC EC Chairman Philip Robertson as marking a turning point for both the committee and the SBC at large. Lorg, who has led Gateway Seminary since 2004 and guided its relocation in 2016, will step into his new role on May 11th following the conclusion of his tenure at the seminary. His election, described by SBC President Bart Barber, as a unifying moment for the community, fills a leadership vacuum that has persisted since October 2021, when former President Ronnie Floyd resigned amidst controversy. Lorg's appointment is seen as a force for good within the SBC, with widespread support and unity anticipated as he takes the helm. Worship leaders Brandon Lake and Phil Wickham are advocating for a genuine return to the simple gospel to address the increasing trend of young people leaving the church or questioning their faith. Lake emphasizes the necessity of conveying God's word with authenticity to earn trust and believability particularly for a generation skeptical of slick preaching. Wickham highlights worship music's unique ability to present the gospel's truths in an engaging manner, especially crucial in today's information-rich environment where young minds are bombarded from an early age. Their Summer Nights Tour targets this goal, aiming to foster authentic spiritual encounters. In 2023, the tour witnessed numerous young individuals embracing Christianity, with the duo planning to continue their mission with the upcoming Summer Nights 2024. Despite their commercial success, Lake and Wickham remain dedicated to their core mission, leading people into the presence of God through music while staying rooted in the gospel's timeless truth. They believe in the power of simple, sincere worship to transform lives, underscoring the importance of direct and kind engagement with the divine. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post Daily Podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast.